Hey, welcome back to the episode of Podcast. I'm your host, Swan. This is my co-host. with me. Hey, Trip. Yo, bud. How you doing, man? You ready to go? You ready to do this? I'm so good. That was fun. That was a fun way to start the episode. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, we're going to talk about Grimgar, Ashes, and Illusions. Uh, it's an older anime that we were recommended recently. And then when I was scrolling through a whole bunch of anime, I was like, oh, yeah, that one. That art looks cool. And then we watched it. Yeah, we sure did. <laughs> uh, I think Jefferson told us to watch it. Shout out to Jefferson. Um, here we are, man. You fucking, you threw the gauntlet down and we're like, we're going to fucking do it. So here we are. We're going to thrash your favorite anime. No, it's not his favorite. It's just something he recommended. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, did, was oh. there a little note there that I missed? Side note, uh, Jefferson ended his email when he recommended this the way that I think all emails should be sent. It whoa, told me to go, whoa, whoa, whoa. It told me to go fuck myself. And I'm going to tell you, Jefferson, I like that. I respect that. You're, you're a boy. He's one of the boys. Okay. So. Good. As long as we're not fighting. As long as. But fuck him. I hate him, dude. (sighs) Sorry, I couldn't. I couldn't hold it in. You're better than that. I'm not. I'm really not. (laughs) (laughs) No. Thanks for the recommendation. Um. Yeah, we'll talk about it. I said I. I'm gonna say I. I had a good time. It was good. Good time. Yeah, me too. Uh. So what you been up to? What's your life? Tell me. What have I been up to? Okay. Cool. So first off, animating. Right. Uh, I had class on Sunday. Teacher. Sunday. I have classes on Sunday and Tuesdays. I think I told you that. Yeah, but Sunday is the day of love. Yeah, Sunday is the yeah. day that God rested. And it's also the day that one has to wake up at 10 in the morning to go to class for several hours. It was Valentine's Day, my guy. Oh, that was what happened this weekend. Yeah, nice. it was Valentine's Nailed Day. Nice. Nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. Like, let me no. talk about class on Valentine's Day. Well, that's Very the first important. thing that happened on class. Okay, anyway. Shout outs to your wife, Sierra. Shout outs to my wife, Sierra. Will you be my Valentine next year? Boom. Got it in right now uh that way trip can't beat me to it every year he tries too slick for your boy it's not uh, true she just beat me to it this year because like <laughs> normally you and i spend <laughs> oh, valentine's that is, this, together is it, this isn't our first is this our first year not being valentine's no nah, i think last it was last year? year last year was our first year for people who don't know the ag world um uh for, and people who don't know what ag means it means agriculture fucking idiots <laughs> the ag world like convention or the fair or the national thing whatever is hang always, sesh yeah, yeah, Hank says when all the farmers come together and they compare each other's belt buckles and boots, yeah. um, is usually around Valentine's Day. So for the last, I don't know, before COVID, like three or four years 13. in a row, yeah, Sierra would always have to go and she'd have to set up a booth and meet people, wheel and deal, and talk about olive oil and stuff because that's what she does. Uh, so it would just leave me and Trip <laughs> to 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 be Valentines, and we would go like we would go on dates. We'd go like out to get food and stuff and uh most time people received it pretty nicely and then sometimes people looked at us like we were fucking losers um fuck that guy at, at the place in or orland or whatever that son yeah. of a bitch no absolutely fuck that place uh not even worth mentioning the name no it's not but fuck him um <laughs> but, but yeah so last year was the first year that sierra didn't have to go because I, I think maybe she wasn't even gonna go just in general she was she like got, fuck it i'm not going i don't need to go well, I think her like she, after she got a promotion, they're like, you, "Hey, you don't have to do this anymore. Like, this yeah. isn't your responsibility anymore." Um, but COVID happened, so that thing got canned. And then this year, well, you know, shit's still kind of not at a hundred. So yeah, it's just two years that you and I <laughs> haven't been Valentines. And you know what, man? I'm gonna be really honest. I really enjoy being your Valentine. It's it's always been, it was always a lot of fun. It was always a lot of fun. See, the thing is, hanging out with friends in person, great time, almost so all better. the time. And when you make a little bit of a deal about it yeah it's gonna be a good time today i was walking upstairs and i looked over and on my on like this the walls to up my stair staircase uh-huh. um there's photos for like mine and sierra's wedding and stuff and there's the the group like not the group the what is it called the party the bridal party, party, party right yeah yeah, yeah yeah but the groomsmen were there and uh you were there and i was like oh my god i i forgot that trip and i are about like the same height like i because i you know we're like lined up and i was like I haven't seen Trip in so long. I don't even know what he looks like anymore. <laughs> I don't know, man. I've uh, never seen myself. Yeah. Anyways, um, where was I? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to do in order. The first thing I did on Sunday was class. Then we did Valentine's stuff. Okay. Uh, class was good. Um, the teacher kind of like, he did critiques of people's works and like where they were at. And he asked me like how I was doing. I was like, oh, okay, cool. And I kind of just like, started spewing about how I felt about the, the work I was doing. I was like, look, I really focused on, on the, the front part. And, you know, I think I really focused a lot on like the feet and the, like the, like the, 
center of gravity, which is like the the hips and stuff coming up and down. Like, and I I really like the way it looks. Uh, but then I looked up at the rest of the character, which is like the arms and the the head and stuff. And I was like, ah, oh, fuck, I forgot I'm supposed to animate that part too. And so I was like, so the bottom half I'm very happy with, and the top half I'm not so jazz. And uh, he kind of just let me go on for several minutes of me explaining like what how I was feeling about my shot. And then he goes, okay, cool, man. I think it looks fucking awesome. I was like, oh, dude, you should have just said that. You should have just started at the beginning and be like, hey, man, you're doing great. And like not make me feel like a total <laughs> idiot. Uh, okay, so I worked really hard. Exactly. Um, That's exactly how I felt. I'm over here fucking just like, oh, and then this, and then that reason. And he just goes, like, yeah, man, like you got a couple elbow pops here. I think it looks great though. I think you're, you're you're like you're in the right spot, the right direction. Good job. Keep up the great work. I was like, fuck this guy. This this guy. He's so kind, but he's 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 always just fucking put me in weird positions. But it was good. Class was short. Um, yes, and then Valentine's stuff happened. Uh, for Valentine's days, even like those here and I wouldn't hang out because he and I would actually hang on the actual day. What you heard I usually do is I would I cook dinner for her. I make you know mm-hmm. a dish and. Um, because usually I, I never cooked in the past. You always handle dinner. But since we got married, I cook a little more often. Like, you know, sometimes I'm like, hey, I kind of want to make this thing. She's like, okay, go ahead and make it. Uh, so I made her favorite, I think it's I think it's her favorite Mexican dish, which is tostadas. So I called, um, like, my parents to figure out, like, hey, how did you make, like, how do you make your salsa? And, like, how do you make your consomme, which is something, like, it's kind of like a, you know, like a, like a French dip has au jus or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like what we have for tostadas. Like, it's like, juicy stuff that you kind of pour on your tostada to make it all soggy yeah except we don't i don't pour it on my tostada i just kind of put it in a mug and sip on it um because i was telling sierra as when we were younger we would just kind of dump it up like some stuff on it and then eat the tostada but it would make the tostada integrity kind of like soggy and then it would just become mush and as we got older we realized we didn't like that so it just became like a thing we sip on while we eat our tostadas um so i asked my parents how to make it and i think i thought they turned out like okay i was like oh these are okay like they're not as good as my parents or whatever but sierra told me i was probably like you know too much in my head and kind of jaded and was like hey these are really good you're just kind of comparing yourself to your parents and you kind of have this idea that their stuff below is better than yours which it will but that's what she said but she said she really liked it so it was good um nice dude yeah so i will for sure i know how to make the salsa and tostadas um salsa for tostadas i guess uh yeah so that was fun and Sierra, like I said, she gave me a, like a case of donuts. She also gave me like a toolbox to put barbecue stuff in it because I made a, some steaks a few, like a month ago or something. And I just had to buy like tongs and like a one of those super comically large like pitchforks that you use to flip meat. Okay. And, and, and it's not like I wanted to buy the biggest one. It's just like the way it went, there was a set and the set was just like, it was cartoony. It felt like I was a little Flintstones. And I was like, well, where do I put them? So I just kind of had them chilling in the garage. And so she bought me a toolbox. I'm like, hey, this is where you can put like your supplies for when you grill. I was like, oh, that's really kind of you. Hell I yeah, didn't dude. buy you. I didn't buy you anything but besides flowers, because <laughs> uh, that's what I usually get her. I usually get her flowers and like chocolates and stuff. But every year she goes, why do you buy me chocolates? You know I don't like chocolates. Like seized candies. They're like, you're right. These chocolates do kind of suck. Um, seized is pretty dope, but they're like Valentine's Day chocolates leave much to be desired. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what when I ordered the flowers. Like I was filling out the delivery stuff and it, and then they're like, Hey, here's your credit card information and boom is done. And I was like, huh, there wasn't a spot for me to put who's it for, you know? I was like, Oh, well uh, it's going to show up here. So Sierra said that when I was in class, someone knocked on the door and they're like, Hey, you got a flower delivery. And she goes like, Oh, cool. And she goes, the girl goes, does a uh, Jose live here? You know, cause, that's my first name. And she goes, yeah, she, yeah. Jose lives here. And she goes, Okay, so this is either from Jose or for Jose, but here they are. <laughs> and so on the card, it, it just said my name on it. I was like, Maxier, those are technically my flowers from myself. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was what just chill. Happened? Like I said, they didn't have like a spot to fill out who it was for. Like, or if it did, I I didn't see like, it. But how could that go wrong? It just seems crazy. Why yeah, wouldn't I they like contact you and be like, hey, just want to make sure no message no no message no nothing just it was jose like, okay it just, jose it just it said my name on it i was like okay cool i guess yeah, i want to deliver flowers to somebody and be like jose here, here you go. go i mean very cool thanks sierra uh, knew they were for her so you know it wasn't a big deal but um tosadas and then we just kind of hung out and i don't know then we watched stuff on tv took a nap it was good it was a good time sounds mellow sounds good yeah i mean even like even normal balance i say it's they're chill like we I make make her dinner. We just hang out. Uh, let's see. 
Okay, on Monday, a friend of Sierra's, um, actually, these there's two friends of Sierra's who got married, and now they have a kid. Gross. Uh, they're moving back to Chico. They were, they went to school here. They moved back to the Bay. I think that's where one of them's from, and they've been living there for a few years. And they're like, you know what? Fuck it. Like it's too expensive. The guy, the, the, the guy was had three jobs at one point just to what pay the rent. Fuck? And no. I was like, this is insane. Um, and so now he has one job and living in Chico and he's buying a house and he's like, has more than enough to like live. And I was like, oh dude, congratulations. I'm really happy for you. Chico? <laughs> yeah. I mean, right. no, I mean, right. in comparison, he's like, dude, like he doesn't have to like work so many jobs just to pay rent for an apartment that isn't his. Um, but anyways, they're moving to Chico. And so we've been doing like a little bit of like just kind of favors for them. Like, hey, can you bring in the mail? I have like a delivery coming in. Or like, hey, the carpet people need to come in and replace the carpets. Could you go open the door and close after them? So stuff like that. Um, so Monday morning-ish time, Sierra said, hey, um, Sam and Matt want to know if you're willing to like help them move furniture into their new home. You know, like beds and couches. And I go, yeah, sure. Um, I, I got it. You know, uh, Sam is a very, she's a small person. And she, I... I had guessed she weighs like 100 pounds. Turns out she weighs 80 pounds. Like she is tiny. Uh, so I was like, uh, yeah, I'll help, you know, because they have no one else to help them. So I was, I was waiting. And then as the day went on, uh, they were getting updates and stuff. And it turns out that Sam, tiny person, threw out her back. So she's like, cool, now Matt's just doing everything by himself. And Sarah's like, they're going to be here a little bit later. Is that okay? I was like, yeah, sure. It's fine. Yeah. And then it was like almost like four o'clock and they go like, they're going to be here around seven. And I was like, are you willing to still help them move? I was like, well, now I feel very obligated because it is nighttime. And uh, yeah, I will absolutely be there to help move because if not, he's going to be moving stuff into the wee hours by himself. So at seven o'clock at night, I drove over to, actually 7.30, I drove over to his place and it was like, hey, how you doing? Good. Let's move this shit. So he just moved so much stuff. He had a giant trailer. Um into his apartment and you know we're at the point where it was like hey we don't i don't care if it's organized it's just we just need all of this stuff off this thing into this area um so yeah that was a huge ordeal i haven't moved i haven't helped someone move in a very long time um and so i was like all right maybe it's time to pay my dues you know and then the next day which was tuesday i was the sorest i've ever been like i would like lift my legs and they would creak and I would oh. step up the steps and my knee would buckle. I was like, oh, cool. I'm dying. <laughs> it's just, I have hit that that peak age of I'm no longer good at anything. So that was fun. Uh, what else? Ah, okay. Um, another thing that's happened this week, I was hit by like, hit by some inspiration. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, I don't know what, uh, I have, what I've been calling them are like vignettes. Um, but I've been writing like these kind of like stories that I would like to maybe animate one day, right? Like, mm-hmm. uh, and it, it's just about people that I grew up with, not like people like, like my siblings or anything, but people, just people that I came influential across. Influential in some way or another. Kind of, yeah, yeah. Like it's, well, uh, the first one was They made an impact enough for yes, you to write about To write them. about them, yeah. And I was like, it was a lot of, and it, the best part of, of the writing process, I guess, for me right now has been not only like, physically writing the thing down i don't mean physically i mean typing it because like i'm not gonna fucking write on a piece of paper like a loser um because i have horrible handwriting but the the me sitting there and thinking about things that they these people had like to do in my life or whatever and me being like what the fuck was i thinking like like trying to like break down what past juan thought of the situation and then current juan realizing you were completely wrong about what was happening uh, or I was absolutely right about this person. Um, so it's interesting. Um, I haven't written something in a long time. I haven't drawn anything in a long time. So it's it's nice to to kind of just get hit with the urge to do those things. So like when I mean draw, like I'll do little sketches of like, yeah, this is kind of what it looked like. Uh, like this scene in my head or whatever. Like this, things were placed out. Um, so yeah, that's that's been fun. I don't know. That I, is an interesting little project, man. That is yeah, something I that I would have never done in my life. And yeah. It's just cool seeing how, like, you're an artist. You draw. You animate. Mm-hmm. And to see yourself, like, look back on your past and be like, yeah, let's just go ahead and, like, adapt some of these things into a current passion. It's interesting. It's I, cool. I, 
I've also I've I'm also on the same page as you. I also find it very interesting. I don't know if it's entertaining. Um, you know, like exactly. So like as like a a form of media, we're like, wow, what a that blew my mind. But I was talking, it was like because I was thinking about this stuff a lot. My sister came over and I was like, Hey, do you mind if I talk to you about this person? And she's like, I haven't thought about that person in like 10 years, like neither have I. Do you mind us discussing these this like these questions that I've brought up because they were in the same grade, you know? And she's like, sure. And it was just kind of I don't know. It just felt, it felt kind of good to be like, huh? I always thought this was a situation. She's like, no, it was more like this. And I go, wow, I was very confused with, with what was really going on or whatever. So yeah, it's uh, I don't know. It, it just feels good. It feels good to, to stretch the old, you know, brain muscle and creativity stuff and be like, cool. I don't know if anybody will ever see it. I don't know if I'll ever get around to making it, but it, it just feels good to, to work out that muscle. Speaking about so, working out muscles. Okay. Today I went for a walk. Oh, look at you. Yeah, bro. Felt good. Um, it was a short walk. It was like 20 minutes. But at, but I was like, hey, man, I did it. I went out there. I said, fuck you, world. I'm going to walk on you. And I did. It was good. Um, I think I'm going to continue doing uh, walks. Maybe longer walks. Um, maybe I'll jog one day. Probably not. But for sure going to be walking. <laughs> Just setting up some good goals. You, you know what's funny is... um. When I was thinking about going for a walk, I thought of your old roommate, uh, what's his fucking name? Dylan? Yeah, the one with, no, not, not no hair, the one with hair. Josh? Josh, there we go. Um, <laughs> the I one that about, you've hung out with, like, a lot? I, I, I don't know who you talk about, um, but yeah, I, I was thinking about Josh, like, I remember Josh would go on walks or whatever, and I remember, I remember asking you one day, like, hey, where's he going? I was like, oh, he's just going to go on a walk, and... I thought that was the stupidest thing ever. I was like, that's so fucking... Really? Uh, exactly. Oh, oh, yeah. I didn't say it out loud because I didn't want like to start any like fights. But I remember being like, thinking, that's fucking dumb. Who would want to go outside and just go for a walk? And he would do that, I feel like, fairly often. like Or a bike ride or something, you know? And uh, I think today, a lot I, of it was him just like working through mental stuff. Okay. So, yeah. So, I think... So, when today when I was like getting ready for my walk, I go, huh... I'm an asshole because uh, cause I in my head I judged Dylan so bad or whatever. No, Josh, Josh. so bad. And, and yeah. And I was like, you know what? I was like. For something that a lot of people do. People do. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, <laughs> you know what? No, man. Sometimes you just got to go on a walk. And so it was fun. I just went on a walk. Put my headphones in. I went on a walk. Um, Dude, when I, whenever I look at my life back then, back when we started the podcast and whatnot, and it hasn't been that long. No. <laughs> it's been it's what? Like four, five years four, maybe. Five? Yeah. Is, it's five around years. that time, four or five years, yeah. I don't know. We lost a whole year, so it feels crazy. It does uh, really feel crazy. <laughs> I, I always reflect back on like how I thought about certain things and and kind of just how I treated each situation. And looking at myself now and being like, I don't give a fuck about anything anyone does. I don't care what I do. Like, mm-hmm. whatever. But back then, I'm just like constantly trying to like. Figure out how I feel about everything that everyone does. Don't know why. It's just something that was ingrained in me. It's like what I was raised to do, yeah. you know? How does that make that person feel? Like, I, who the fuck cares? Yeah, I don't care. But back I just then want you everyone did care. to be able yeah. to do literally whatever they want to do as long as it's not hurting or influencing anybody in negative ways. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just fucking vibe. Mm-hmm. And I feel like going on a walk is like the most just vibing anyone can do. Like yeah. you're with yourself in nature or city or whatever. You're just in your surroundings and get to do whatever the fuck. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it's interesting because it was like it's not like I went somewhere super far away. I, went, I you know walked around my neighborhood and I was like, yeah, man, this is pretty nice. Like I'm just out here. Am I walking with a purpose? Not really. Um, will I achieve something? Probably not. Is that okay? Yeah, I'm gonna go home yeah, now because yeah. I feel like I walked enough. Um, so tomorrow, maybe I'll go on, a, on another walk. I don't know. Maybe I'll be that guy. Maybe that walking guy. You know. Hey, uh, there he is walking again. I am walking here. You know. Uh, get yourself a walking stick. Yeah, I get myself walking shorts, really short ones, so you know the boys can breathe. Yeah. Um, the boys uh, the, gotta it, breathe. the last thing is uh, tomorrow I got an eye exam, so. Maybe get dilated. Maybe maybe get one of those things going on. I have been, been uh, needing to get an eye exam so bad, like since COVID started, and I've been like, dude. "Eh, it's pretty okay," but I just don't want somebody close to my face. Mm-hmm. I don't want to get them sick. I don't want them to get me sick. So yeah, for sure. Just I trying know that, to avoid uh, all that shit. 
I know that I, I, I feel, I feel like my eyes are, have gotten weaker. Um, I feel like things are blurry and I go, shit. It's, I'm like, I was, I was telling you, he was like, I feel like my eyes are getting worse. And then I got a phone call from like my eye person. They're like, Hey, it's time for your exam. And I go, you know what? It is about time. Someone fucks around with my eyes and. Yeah. Yeah. I do see like shit. Like, yeah. So that's exciting. Tomorrow will be, there'll be that. That's it, man. I, I was trying to think about like any like shows or movies that I watch and like none of them really come to mind. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. Been chilling. Been, uh, been doing good. I feel like this week is a uh, success and it's in the positive column hell yeah i'm what stoked about you? for you well since last week uh back when i had the covid scare somebody yeah. getting a positive result at work well the next morning as it turned out uh i let my you know i had let my work know and they were like yeah just don't come in yet uh come in on friday or whatever I'm like that sounds cool but then the next morning they called me or like text me i don't remember uh, at like eight thirty, and I already knew that I wasn't gonna come in. Um, maybe I didn't. I don't know. I remember being told first thing when I woke up, like, "Don't come into work," and I was like, "Okay," <laughs> went back to sleep. So essentially, I stayed home all week last week. The first three days, riddled with anxiety. I also had like a weekend in between, which was chill, um, but it was just regular weekend. So then I got two extra days to just vibe thursday and friday i didn't have to do shit so uh since i was no longer anxious and felt like i could have a good time i played a lot of video games i played some games in my backlog um i don't remember if i talked about playing grizz last week or Uh, this week i think no i think you did last week that sounds familiar yeah so then after playing that, I played uh, Ori and the Blind Forest, which I've been wanting to play for a long time and played a little bit of, um, but I dropped it because I just wasn't in the right mindset, I guess. Uh, it's a side-scroller Metroidvania platformer style game, you know? It had a lot of really fluid, cool, good-feeling mechanics. It had an emotional story. I was in it, and uh, it looks, yeah, just absolutely stunning soundtrack's beautiful they nailed so many things about this game when ori and the blind forest came out people were freaking out about it but it was an xbox exclusive like only on windows and xbox thing so i didn't get to try it out until i got a windows so i played it last year or something and then this year just now picked it up again beat it loved it and i played the sequel which came out earlier last year 2020 um, the sequel is so much stronger than it, and I don't know, it, it's really good. A lot of people talk about the games, uh, together, because it is a direct sequel from the first one, but I don't know if you need to play the first game to go into the second. It won't have as much of an emotional impact, but it also won't have that much of an emotional impact in general i think uh there are lots of emotional moments the story is pretty somber uh if you don't know the story of the first game this whole forest is dying uh there's no food everyone's starving and our main character which is this little spirit of the forest orphan little child thing that was being raised by somebody else uh dies and they're parent that adopted them dies and then they get resurrected and they have to go and revive the whole forest and bring life back to it and it's a whole thing and there's an evil owl and it turns out the owl's evil because it's three children uh all died like a whole bunch of things happen so it's even bringing compassion to the antagonist of the story uh really really good time i loved the first game for the story the second game uh, not going to spoil much, but you have a new sister, um, and then you and your sister get separated, and you have to try to save your sister, and then it turns into a whole bunch more stuff where you're, again, trying to save the forest, but it's a different forest you're in. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's kind of a Finding Nemo type situation. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, Finding Nemo, or Finding Dory, you know, whichever. <laughs> no, 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 specifically Finding Nemo. Because your sister has... uh, Amnesia. A A small fin. Yeah, a small fin. (laughs) Without saying much more than that. 
that's exactly what happens. Um, and then, yeah, they get separated and she, with a small fin, can't really do much in order to get back to you. So it's up to you to go and find her. And, uh, yeah, it's it's a really good time. Solid game. Absolutely gorgeous. The things that they did well, uh, put it on, like, like just below, for me, Hollow Knight tier of Metroidvania type games. You said you beat it, though? Oh, yeah, I beat it. How long, um, how long did it take you? I don't know. Not that long. Let me go ahead and uh, whoop, just pop up Steam and figure out. Uh, 13 and a half hours to collect all the items, hmm. which wasn't that bad. And like seven and a half hours for Ori and the Blind Forest to collect all the items. Um, yeah. Super fun. Super fun time. Um, and it feels good. Like... I know that you you don't have this, but you've seen my list that I have in my living room on the whiteboard of all the different games and stuff, right? Yeah, is it, is it all crossed out yet, or what? Uh, no, there's still some of them on there that I haven't. Is touched. Fortnite still there? No, you played Fortnite. You can cross that yeah, out. Yeah, we crossed out Fortnite. I got my chicken dinner. We're fine. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> uh, but it it feels so good to check games off of your playlist uh, that you haven't been able to do. You just have this backlog of everything, and then finally you commit to doing it. Mm -hmm. play it uh so it felt really good to complete three games in a week that i'm never gonna play again like it's great i had an amazing time i don't want to revisit them but a game that i am revisiting is control Mm -hmm. when best game of 2019 or 2020 i think 2019 it won editor's choice for a lot of things right people really like that game yeah so it was really good. I had an amazing time. I played it on PS4. I did have some uh, gripes with it, but not like major ones. And they released it for free uh, for this month's PlayStation games or whatever. But in its full collection with all the DLC and stuff. So now I'm playing through that again because I just had such a good time. I, I'm playing it more. And I since I know what to look forward to into the game later... It's interesting playing something that you're already familiar with and just being able to power through it and have a great time. Um, so yeah, control, pretty solid. I, I think it looks amazing on the PS5. It loads faster. Um, I I can't wait to beat that game again and get to the DLC that I haven't played. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much all the stuff that I've been like playing, playing. Of course, still more Sea of Thieves. It's fantastic. Uh, I guess nothing to report too much there. We're trying to kill all the Megalodons, these giant sharks that will randomly show up and attack you. And we got a new one last time we played. Um, The Ancient One is the name of it. So you get titles each time that you kill the sharks. Uh, Like, I don't remember exactly what it says, like Slayer of or something. So Slayer of the Hungering One, Slayer of the, like, Queen's Ghost or some bullshit like that. (laughs) Slayer of uh, the Shadow Maw and now Slayer of the Ancient One. It feels good to get all the different titles, but there's just one more that has, like, a very, very low percentage chance. It's either 3% or below that. I can't remember what Kyle said. um, To spawn... If it's a shark. It's fun, man. I love the game. Do you know what it's called? I don't remember. It's something about like celestial or ghosts or some bullshit. <laughs> I know that it's kind of like a pink, uh, like translucent looking thing from what I understand. But I don't think I've seen it yet. Let's see. Hungry one. Crested one. Shadow ma. Ancient Terror? Is that the one that you... Uh, that's the one that we just killed, the Ancient Terror. Yeah. How about the Shrouded Ghost? Shrouded Ghost, that's what we're looking for. I see, one, two, three, four, yeah. five. Yeah, so you're four out of five, not bad. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So we'll get there. Uh, it's been so much fun, and I really... I'm super tempted. You can buy pets in the game, and you can buy like costumes for the pets and stuff. And we've played it a lot, and you have to use real money to buy the pets. Oh, so that's how they get you, man. I know. We have been trying to get through the season pass. It's a new thing. They they added season passes a couple of weeks ago. Um, we've been trying to get through the entire season pass to get that free real money. Because <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah. the only way to get it. Ah, uh, man. I, I might buckle down and just get a dog. 
You get a cute little you dog. A dog. You can dress okay. it up like a pirate. Have him adventure with you. You can also get... You see, the two things that I want to get are a dog and a parrot. They're also cats, and I feel like cats are very appropriate to have on a pirate ship since they were originally there to like eat the rats and stuff and make sure people don't get scurvy and different yeah, ways yeah. and all that shit. You um, want to get a... Uh, they, you can get a capuchin monkey, I think. Yeah, you get some monkey... A marmoset. Monkey action going on. Yeah. Um, Capuchins. Mm-hmm. Lots of monkeys. Lots I mean, of I feel dogs, like, lots of cats, lots of parrots. I feel like... Uh, I mean, any pet's cool, but yeah, man, real money's for it. Ugh. I know. It's it's tough, but I've played the game a lot at this point. Um, and I think that if I did spend real money on it, I wouldn't... I wouldn't feel, too bad feel about it. that bad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like. I think I've talked about this on the podcast, kind of how I break money down um, when it comes to entertainment. Like, if I see a movie and I'm paying, like, 20 bucks for the movie for two hours, sure, I'm okay paying 10 hours, or, I mean, 10 bucks per hour. hour, That sounds fine. That's like, yeah, yeah, I'm enjoying myself. That's how I also break down video games and TV shows and whatnot. Like, if I have to pay for a season of the show, I'm like, if I really like it, then sure, I'll pay 25 bucks for 12 episodes, a couple bucks per episode. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. For video games, I've played 55 hours of Sea of Thieves, and I've been having an amazing time. It's like I, I got it, I think, for $40, so it's more than – or it's less than a dollar an hour. So if I did spend more money on it, I would feel pretty okay about that. But, like – But, you know, that's how they get you. I'm resistant to do it. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> it once is you how open those gates, you. man, that once you get open those gates, you're like, wow, I can get my dog and get him in a little Megalodon outfit. It only costs this much real yeah, money. Thank you. you know what and, they should do? Hmm. They should make it so you can get a pet fish, you know, That'd on your pirate rad. ship. Yeah, yeah, That'd yeah. be sick, you know? That'd be pretty sick. Think about it. You can catch your snakes. It. Can you put them in a, in a fish bowl? You can put them in a basket. You can play That's music like the same and thing. then they get like docile. Oh, cool. Yeah, you know, yeah. like a snake charmer. And that's not a pet because... Uh, you sell it. Yeah. Oh, lame. Yeah. No, pets uh, yeah. Pets do different shit. Yeah, you know. Uh, but I don't know. Like, when you play games, if you spend money on the game, um, spend real money, and it gives you something that you could also get, like, different versions of uh, by spending less money. Like, if you could buy a jacket in a video game using in-game currency, or you could do one with real money... I'll just use the in-game currency shit. But you can't get a pet unless you use real money. That's how they get you, man. I know that's how they get you, but like they they might have got me. Anyways, uh still haven't done it yet, but I Can I'm you only have now, one like, pet or can right you have as many pets as you fence. want? I don't know. And by that I mean I don't know how many you could have on your ship at a time. Mm-hmm. I know that you can only have one out if it's you personally. But there are four crew members. That's four you know? pets. That's four pets. So it really depends. Hey man, I'm not doing. gonna I'm not gonna, you know, try to dissuade you. I just think after seeing my, my Sierra's grandpa explain to me that his in his, in his virtual golf game oh my God. he has to pay for golf balls and those golf balls, when he loses them, they get lost for realsies. And when he plays with those golf balls for too much, they get worn out and then they can't play with them anymore. Nothing will baffle me more than that. That is, that's yeah, yeah. That's that's the ultimate right there. That's such it a just racket. Seems so predatory. Yeah, oh, it's horrible. You know? And he's like an old man, and he's just like, "This was a great idea." He's like, this is horrible. You're doing this. This is a horrible thing that you're doing, sir. They make you pay for power ups so you can like get better gauges so you can understand how to use your powers. Like, yep. Since I paid for the power up, now everybody in my club my club can use it. I was like, yeah, but you don't have anybody else in your club. You play by yourself. And you're trying to convince me to play with you, and it's not happening. I don't want to lose real money with these golf balls. Well, you know what you got to do. Uh, you got to get them caught up with the modern era. Today, a new Mario Golf was announced. No way! Yeah, it was announced, and I was waiting for the podcast to tell you about this. That's awesome. Uh, because I know how you feel about the Mario sports games. They're all like so much pretty fun. cool. They're fun. Yeah, yeah. And they have a new mode, which is perfect for you. Do you know why it's perfect for you? Is it survival mode? No, even better. Is it speed run mode? Oh my god! No, 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 no. get the <laughs> fuck out of here. No one. Here's the thing that you do: you try to get through the course as fast as possible. And how do you do that? You hit the ball and you run to where it lands. <laughs> so you 
you gotta fucking sprint your ass off and hit it as fast as you can. I think it's gonna be chaotic and so much fun. <laughs> I watched okay on on that note um, because I because I've been just talking about a bunch of golf with my Sierra's grandpa when he was in town. Um, I get a bunch of ads for golf, bunch of videos for golf. I saw these guys and they try to play like interesting rounds of golf to make it more you know more YouTube friendly or whatever. So like the kids will get into it. Um, one thing he did was he decided to play with the tallest professional golfer who's like seven foot something and <laughs> he's like of an average height and they decided to play around a round of golf, like a hole of golf, but they switched clubs. And so the, the really tall golfer has custom gloves that are like longer to fit or whatever. So he's yeah. playing with these giant cartoon things and the, t- and then the, the giant man's play these little tiny golf clubs. That's and another fantastic. one they did was they wanted to see who could play the fastest hole. So they did what you did. They had their driver with them. That's an a, actual a, like game yeah, that people they, play apparently. Yeah. yeah. They had a, their driver, I think a wood and uh, a putter. And they're like, okay, cool. So they like, boom, hit the driver and they start running. <laughs> yeah. Trying to find their ball and then boom, hit it. And then they, they'd run to the green and like, boom. And like, okay, cool time. <laughs> yeah. So, so aren't you I've excited? I've seen that in real life. <laughs> that does sound really fun. Um, but not because I don't like, I don't like it because of the connotations that it's oh because you're a speedrunner i am not a speedrunner i don't speed or anything (laughs) that does sound like a lot of fun what's it is it just called mario golf switch or something or what fucking no probably (laughs) i'm I'm so bad at that dude there's a there's some triangle rpg that looks like a an octopath type game and i'm excited about that but like hesitantly excited because i wasn't super big fan of the gameplay in octopath traveler uh but i love the style and i like the idea behind it so there's like all it's, kinds of weird shit. That it's I'm called like, Mario so. Golf Super Rush. Super Rush. There you go. Super Rush to the next ball and again and again and again. Uh, it's your kind of game, dude. <laughs> it does sound kind of fun. What was your favorite um, Mario sport game? Sport game. Yeah. Uh, does go-karts count? No, I'm not counting okay. the racing ones. <laughs> okay. <'cause just> <laughs> those, yeah. <laughs> Uh, specifically like a like a sport game you know because in the race because there is sports racing is a sport but you're not allowed to throw a shell at your competitor you know like that's not yeah 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 yeah, yeah. um i'll go if you don't if you don't have yours well the thing is a lot of people love super mario strikers and i never got to play the soccer one Um, that was really good yeah i never got to play the soccer game uh i did not like the baseball too much wasn't big on the baseball yeah okay but I can tell you that I loved the fuck out of every golf game, all of the Mario golf games, and really? all of the Mario tennis games. Okay, I have yeah. had such a good time with both of them. Uh, that's why it's so hard for me to choose. It's because it's like the lows are low and the highs are Highs-er high, and then high, Striker yeah. I'd never played. And my like, my guess was going to be that you were going to say like one of the tennis ones because tennis ones are fun. Um, it's hard because like. I had so much fun playing the co-op story mode of the latest tennis game. I did not have as much fun playing competitively. Remember when we had to beat that witch character that had just threw lobs all the time or whatever, uh, or curveballs? Fuck, the, on the, I, like, and, and uh, they had the band had the, on the boat, and they had the fucking mass in the center. Yeah, it was I, fucked up. I wanted to kill myself. It's like two in the morning. We're like, we should go to bed. It's like, <laughs> but no, we got to beat this thing. <laughs> Um, like you want to go on a walk and you're like fuck yeah it. I, can't, I can't fucking <laughs> do this uh let's see what was it i i played strikers i really enjoyed that one i also really liked the the baseball one and i think looking back at it it probably was very broken though there wasn't like it, it was easy to win um yeah golf and golf and tennis were a lot of fun i'm gonna say the strikers one i played that one a lot with my cousins who were really into soccer and i wasn't super into soccer yeah. but i do have like a lot of fond memories about playing and i was like cool i don't really have to understand it all that great and i still see people playing um mario strikers like <laughs> they'll be like all right we're here's my video of my tournament that i had and it's just like really didn't know people still got down on this one i also never played the basketball well the basketball one was was a like an add-on to like nba street or something like that like it wasn't its, what the fuck was it I, I don't think it was its own game i don't remember it, mario basketball ever being its own game it just was you could play mario characters in another game i'm pretty sure if it if they did add it i'd never played it uh mario hoops three on three was a uh ds game okay well then i'm not gonna play the ds DS games don't count those are bullshit <laughs> like monster Hunter doesn't count not a real game yeah and they've had other things like i haven't played any of the mario at the olympics um Me mario, either. sonic and all that 
Yeah, but there's... There's a lot of different games that probably people don't know about. Mario yeah, Slam I'm... Basketball and Mario 3-on-3 three three Basketball. And... Yeah, I, I don't know. I just I feel like because it was like on the like the handheld game, I don't think it ever really crossed my radar. Yeah. Um, the other ones were for sure like on... Uh, on the console, at least to my knowledge, like tennis was on a console, fucking baseball, golf, all of those. Yeah, man, that's cool. I guess you really tricked me because you were talking about how you watched Nintendo's Direct and you're like, I wasn't really impressed. You son of a bitch. You know, there was an amazing game out there and you fucking didn't want us to tell me. Yeah, man, I had to, you know, I had to hype up for it. Fucking uh. <laughs> anime 2021 betrayal. It has happened. You have betrayed me. I cannot believe it. Whatever, man, my bad. But I am super excited about uh, Legend of Mana as well. I already gushed mm-hmm. a little bit about it, but I'm also like, I own it, but now I'm going to own it own in it a again. different way. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm going to convince somebody to play with me because I fucking love those games. Yeah, man. Uh, they also announced some new Monster Hunter stuff, uh, and that was cool, but like, I'm going to be playing it regardless. I almost don't want to see anything and get blown away at the point where I'm at um, with Monster Hunter things. But if I do see it, I'm not disappointed. I'm constantly looking for new news. Just not necessarily the news that uh, people are most excited about. Like, I don't want to see new monsters. I don't want to see their new abilities. I I would love to see new locales. I'm into that. Uh, new ideas. Like, now, instead of having... They had, like, variants of monsters. So you would have fight the Rathian. And then later on, you fight a high rank Rathian. And then you fight... Uh, they have a gold Rathalos and, or no, a gold Rathian, silver Rathalos, and they are way harder and way different than the other Rathian and Rathalos, but you like work your way up to that. Uh, you fight a tempered Rathian, you fight a pink Rathian, you fight a blue Rathalos, and like all of them are different and they're harder. And now they have a new kind of different harder thing and it's apex predators. So apex monsters. I'm very excited about that. Because the one that they showed off was a little fucking shitty boy. And you could fight him in the demo. He is an armadillo bear. And it's fucking cool. I, I've always loved the idea behind it. But it's such an easy to kill early monster that it it you don't get to use any of its gear, really. You don't really get to do anything with it. Um, now it's going to be an apex predator. Now it might get its moment to shine. I really hope it does. I'm super excited about it, to be honest. Uh, And then there's also the potential of new stuff coming from that. I'm just excited about the whole thing. Um, That that's the kind of stuff that I'm looking for. The like new gameplay mechanics. I'm checking out this armadillo bear. He looks (coughs) terrifying. Yeah, man. There's some cool ones uh, that don't get a lot of attention because they're so early. Yeah, they're like weak boys. Yeah. there was this, like, kangaroo lemur type thing. I don't really know how else to describe it, I guess. <laughs> that was also really cool in the past. I'm hoping it makes a return, but it might not. There's a giant, like... It always reminds me of, like, an Aztec god. It's a giant feathered snake with, like, a beak. Nice. Uh, Very scary. Very, very into that. Um, Yeah. Different cool monsters that don't get as much attention because you're not going to use their armor or gear for that much more than when you're fighting them. <sighs> so anyways, yeah, that bear thing is pretty cool. And they showed off the new one, and I was excited about that. But that's Nintendo. There's a bunch more stuff. Nintendo made a ton of announcements. Uh, I'll probably play Splatoon 3. Anyways, I haven't done much else this week. Going back to work was stressful as fuck because I'm like, I have a whole week of work that I have to make up here. Uh, And then when I got back, I noticed that a lot of the things that I had to do weren't around. But then a lot of other things that I didn't expect to have to do were still around and whatnot. So I've been just chugging away at that. The first day back on Monday was nonstop. It was just a very, very busy, difficult time. And then Tuesday, yesterday was a lot easier. It was a pretty chill day. No complaints, really. It worked out fine. Today, complaints. I was tired the whole day. I wanted to procrastinate everything the whole day. Uh, 
got more way more done than I needed to. But I still just uh today was a slog. And then to come and do the podcast when I'm like not having a good day. I was looking forward to doing the podcast all day. And then I'm like, shit, my attitude sucks right now. <laughs> like this fucking blows. Wake up in the morning and I'm so stoked. I'm like, today's going to be a good day. It's me and Emily at work. It'll just fly by. And then after that, I'll finish up the show. I'll eat some good food. I'll watch Juan for a little bit. And then we'll click record. And then I'm done. Anyways. It's been, it's been a fucking weird time at work. But there has been one shining star throughout the whole process. Whew. Somebody is moving in here whose name is Brantley. (laughs) Come on, dude. Brantley. I love that name so much. It sounds like a fake name. It It sounds like a name name. that you like make up in a sketch video. They go, your name's Brantley. You said Brantley with a T. And then everyone's like, yeah, duh. I fucking could not handle seeing that name, man. And... Here's the thing. I, I'm not going to give this person's name away, I, but it rhymes. Like, their first and last name rhyme, and it has alliteration. And I'm like, what are you doing to this kid? Like, okay. Oh, here, on. here we go. Here we go. Alliteration, that means it both start with B. His first name is Brantley, and they rhyme. Mm-hmm. Brantley Branterson. Branterson doesn't rhyme. <laughs> Brant. Brantley, oh, that's right. Brantley, <laughs> Br- Brantley, Br- Brantley, Brutley. Brantley, Br- I can't do this. Tell me what his name is. That's pretty much me it. Name? I mean, I could text you his name, but Brantley, Brutley is like exactly the same kind of oh, like, nice. mood. I looked <laughs> up Brantley. Um, I Googled it. There's a <laughs> there's a professional baseball player. He's a catcher. Uh, his name is Robert Brantley. Ooh. Played for the Marlin, uh, the Miami Marlins. I don't know if he still plays. But yeah, that's but cool. you know how I, his uh, last name was Brantley? Not his first one? That's his first name, yeah. yeah, yeah but yeah. No, nobody else popped up when it I was like, hey, uh, that's interesting. I have I can honestly say I've never heard that name. Yeah. Uh, I love coming across new names so much, especially when they have like a special flair to them. Like, fucking love it. I mean, that's why I have Chris Pather on everything is because mm-hmm. it's so close to a name that you're familiar with, but it's not at all uh mm. that's the kind of shit that gets me fucking rock hard dude i love it so yeah that's been getting me through this work week easily wherever that's you are brantley getting me through life so thank if you're you, listening brantley. if you're listening to this podcast brantley from the bottom of our hearts and from the rock hardness of trip's dick thank you all right, uh, that ends the Brantley segment of the podcast, and uh, come back next week for more Brantley updates. <laughs> yeah, man, I don't know. There's, there's not a lot of work stuff. That one just fucking got me. I was like, holy shit, this is the best, uh, and had to save it for the podcast before I told anybody because it was just like so good. I wanted to be like a raw, authentic. Here is a name nobody's ever heard of. And no one's ever spoken like it. A mind blast, like it doesn't Brantley, exist. B- brutally, like you're the you're the first person to ever say his name out loud. <laughs> Who would have thought, it is. man? That's wild. That's crazy. Uh, I just couldn't imagine naming my kids something like that. To where it's like, oh man, that's like a weird mess in your mouth, and I don't like it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyways, watching stuff. It's pretty much just like. I tried to watch Glitch Text, which is that Netflix show that I started a while ago, and I just fucking it's a, it's a very childish, and I am not mm. in the mood for some very childish shit. Um, and I haven't found anything good to watch instead. Um, mm-hmm. I would really like to watch more Adventure Time because I kind of put that on hold. You know? Can I suggest something just so you can watch it before I get around to it? What's up? Watch Infinity Train and let me know how great it is so then I can go watch it. I'm that's also on my list. There's Infinity Train, uh Over the Garden Wall. Oh, and, you haven't seen that? God yeah, damn exactly. It, and Owl's House or Owl's Home or whatever the fuck it's called. You gotta watch Over the Garden Wall. Like I know you'll love it. It's great. Owl House. Yeah, I know I will. I already know that I will, Juan. There it, there's a list of anime and like uh cartoons and television that I would like to watch, 
but I'm also like, what do I want to commit to right now? And I'm in the middle of Adventure Time, and I kind of don't feel like I should pass it by since it's getting to the point where, like, I haven't seen anything, uh, so I want to pay more attention to it. And beforehand, mm-hmm. when I was watching it, I was also, like, playing shit. I wasn't entirely focused. 100% yeah, focused. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, uh, on Adventure Time. So, I don't know. Well, we'll see. <laughs> Yeah. But I haven't really watched anything aside from anime, and I've watched plenty of anime. Okay. What about you? You watched any anime? I think I've fallen into like my comfort zone of like, hey, these are the for sure the four shows you're gonna watch every week. There are other shows I want to watch, um, but I just don't get around to them for whatever reason. And it, there might be it might be cases of me having to binge them before we have to do our like our um, our wrap up at the end. Uh, you know. Those are shows like uh, fucking Skate the Infinity and the Cells at Work and the pervy dude that's like a fucking child, super awesome, whatever. Uh, yeah. yeah, which I still so, don't know how I feel about that exactly. Yeah, but, I don't yeah. think a lot. I think a lot of people don't know how they feel about it. I think I saw some discussions about it. I was like, oh, people are kind of not super vibing with the very most recent episode or the one that you told me about. You know, with the the maid. I was like, yeah, no. Trip told me about it, and I instantly felt like maybe this isn't okay. You know, kind of thing. But. It's, but no, don't don't defend your dirty show, you fucking perv. I don't want to hear it. The hard part is that what convinced me to keep watching it, because I was like, I'm fucking over these characters and stuff, is that the whole point of the show is for this pervert fuck-up 30-something-year-old to realize what a pervert fuck-up he was and become a good person in the process. And I kind of mm-hmm. want to see how that worked out in this world, because it felt like... So many things in this world were very unique to uh, how it revealed itself in its story and characters and whatnot. Um, Mm -hmm. That it keeps you intrigued on that end. But I don't like the characters enough to normally keep watching something. Because they're kind of all shitty-ish people. Um, But if the whole point is for him to get like better and to just be a, a nicer, cooler, kinder guy, then I'm into that. I don't know where we're at right now. Um, yeah. Anyways. I anyways. I feel. So shows I watched. Uh, watched Dr. Stone, the most recent episode of Dr. Stone. I don't know if you've heard I of it. I gotta watch that. I gotta most watch amazing it. Show, most amazing show of the season, hands I down. I don't... Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, this episode, Mr. Dr. Stone, you know how last episode <laughs> they they made a, a steam car or whatever? I was yeah, of you? course. Like, they made a, a car, yeah. They made a vehicle. Yay. Uh, this week they made wheels for the vehicle because it was just wooden wheels originally and it was like fairly unbalanced. So they're like, we'll make bamboo wheels that will be airless, kind of like the space rovers or whatever. Like, yeah, cool, let's fucking do it. So now it's got these big dumb wheels and they call it their like group steam gorilla or whatever. So they have a gorilla face on the front of it and they're like pushing the car. The old people decided to stay behind because uh, fucking Dr. Stone wanted everybody to, you know, anybody who couldn't walk alongside the, the vehicle to be riding it so they could be safe. And the old people were like, this was a, kind of like a touchy moment. The old people were like, nah, man, we talked about it and we're going to stay in the village. And they go, but what if like they come and attack, you'll have no one defending you. And they go, yeah, we know it's cool. Essentially saying like, if we die, you know, we die. It is what it is or whatever. We're not going to, if, if we stay behind you young folks will have more time, more room for your science stuff. So I was like, oh my God, old people. I mean, I have no connection to any of these old people, but they just showed us a collection of old people that were all really tiny and like had little hunchbacks. Yeah, I'm like, it, they never showed them in they the never first showed season. Them, no. They just always talked about the village having more people than there actually were. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I'm like, and now I guess we, okay. we saw a collection of how many people there are. Um, so they're pushing their car. They're trying to go save uh, Chrome, like I said. And then... Uh, I guess what's his face? The big bad has put him in a spot where like a vehicle could easily kind of like get to him because he's kind of just kind of deduced that this is what he would build because he's a fucking genius. And so he's built like pits with like bamboo spikes essentially at the bottom. And so he's decided I'm going to escape before they can, you know, save me. He's like, I'm going to escape with science. And that's what he said. And then they're like, hey, this vehicle isn't, I don't know, like the best. Maybe we should have made it with two pistons. Yeah, maybe we should have. And then he gets a fucking brain blast, like fucking Jimmy Neutron, and he turns his his normal vehicle into a tank now. Um, I they, was they, gonna make a joke. No, they like, turn it into called tank. Stone Wars. Is he gonna turn it into a tank? He does. He absolutely makes it a tank. Uh, he he adds another like steam thing and maybe more pistons, but 
the the thing that he com- he combines uh, he makes paper and then he also combines uh like plastic resin or whatever and he like kind of layers it on each other so i forget what he called it it's not is it carbon fiber it's something but it's very it's very lightweight and super strong and the guy with the spear tried to like destroy it and he couldn't like i was like oh my god this thing's great and that's the episode they made a tank oh and they put, <laughs> they put an even bigger gorilla face on the front of it <laughs> of like, course nice. of course uh okay that you was think that Dr. if they Stone. made a tank before the old people would have been like oh yeah we'll oh, come with you <laughs> we'll come <laughs> like maybe no. you know <laughs> it's it's funny is it's like yeah now that we got this tank all the like the people like we're indestructible we're just gonna ram him over and have a bloodless you know war i was just like if you run someone over for the tank you're gonna kill them and then you know the main characters send you whatever it was like yeah if we run into this thing like the cave with our tank it'll absolutely crash into it but then it won't work anymore. So this is kind of a one and done tank. I only this is a this is a tank with a one ram in it. That's like like oh that's stupid. Build a better one, Mister Doctor Stone. What no, are you that doing? That sounds about right for their situation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Next show I watched uh, Horimiya. That's what it's pronounced. That's what it's called. Yeah. It. And it was um, the most depressing episode of all time. Was it? Is it because he cut his hair? Whoa. Okay. Because <laughs> okay. Because in in my notes I wrote cut his hair oh my god yum that was my yum that's how how i felt about dude that's so fucking good i'm I'm out (laughs) i don't want to listen to you i unplugged his headphones guys i can't he he can't hear what i'm saying i can hear (laughs) okay all right trip he looks really good um yeah he's handsome but like man bro he was that like dark and handsome before and now he's just now he's just straight up no mystery no intrigue he's just a fucking good looking son of a gun I will say that when he had his hair up, he looked even sexier. When like the the dad was just like, "How about you put your hair up?" And I was like, "Yeah, bro, you should put your hair up." Exactly. Looking like looking like one of our high cube boys, you know? You know what I'm saying? Woo! Snacks. The ace. City. Um but yeah, then he, he I guess in this episode uh other kids kind of catch on to them dating because he he spent the night. He was forced to sleep over and share a room with uh the, you know, the girl's dad. And at school, rumors start spreading, and like, oh my god, and like I can't believe she's dating such a creepazoid. So because of peer pressure, my dude cut his hair, and he's looking like a fucking schnack. Okay, he's looking delicious. Yeah, he uh, is. Yeah, and in that episode, uh, I think my favorite part of the episode was the part when they get invited by his like former middle school friend to go try weird candies, and they're like, what flavor is this one? It's like it's clay flavored, and this one is cheese flavored. And I was just like ew what fucking and he's just like yeah my girlfriend took all the normal flavors and just left me with these horrible ones which makes me laugh so much essentially what it what it is is it's it's like it's like you inviting me over to taste gross candy and it's like yeah, yeah i could absolutely see that happening yeah it's um, fun and they kissed and he stole whoa he, he stole um some candy from her mouth and i was like bro he smoothed with it all right my boy's got it he's got game i liked it it's a good episode man it's just it a good their one. relationship it's just a good show the relationship's growing time all the time. She was like, "Why don't you make a move on me?" And I was like, "Bitch, he he just stole candy from your mouth, okay? That shit was hot. You should be you should be good for at least a week. For at least <sighs> a week. But yeah, good show. Love that love that outro. Good intro. Yeah, oh, just amazing. a good show. Um, I watched not the most recent episode because we're kind of we're always one episode behind with Wonder Egg Priority. Yeah. We get to see I don't know her name, but she's the character with the darker skin. We get to see her fight. I think we haven't seen her fight yet. And no, we got to see her, um, her weapon. Yeah, we got to see kind of what she's about. Uh, she's interesting. I, Dude, I've... she's got a sick ass gun, bro. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's, she's like an Uzi. And then at some, she's like, then it's a giant sniper rifle. It's like, ah, oh, yeah, bro. I like that. And it's like a compass or something. I don't I know what it I is. I don't know what it is either. Cause like she was holding whatever the time the small version of it was, yeah, yeah, like a compass, like uh, with the pencil and the and the pointy bit that you would use to make circles. Yeah, that's what you're talking about, right? Yeah, I think it's that. Um, because all of them have like school supplies or whatever, or like a, a something they would carry around with them. Um, this episode was good. They they had a moment where like the all the girls were hanging out and like becoming friends, and and then even when everything's going great, they always manage to bring up something really horrible, like. One character, you know, starts bringing up the questions that we were asking, like, hey, you know, why did your friend kill himself? And it was like, was she doing something with the 
counselor like maybe he was touching right. her or and whatever started and guessing and yeah and we're like and i was like trip and i were just having this conversation at last week we're like is this what's going on because we're not sure and you know the main character's just like that's not it at all it turns out that the the tall um character that looks kind of like a boy uh is related to the the counselor like she's her the niece right or something that's something. her uncle yeah and she's like defending her uncle like no he's not like that kind of stuff and i was like well i don't know like he's 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 drawing girls you know you know what they say um, kyle and i were just like oh maybe she got pregnant maybe oh yeah that would have yeah, been, been really dark yeah and maybe like he keeps coming over to keep an eye on her to like to see if she knows or whatever like oof. So, i don't know man shit's heavy um yeah and then we also get some more of backstory for the for the tall girl she's like talking about her her friend you know how she like disrobed in front of her and told her like how she felt and it was just like and she was obviously taken aback by that she didn't expect to hear that from her friend like the one care like one person in her life who she thought was like uh just saw her also as a girl and not like some like good looking boy or whatever so i understand her i kind of get like where she came from and why she also feels torn and they all kind of spoke about like why they're doing what they're doing, you know, like, I don't know what the fuck her name is. The, the annoying one, the pink haired chick with the, the, <laughs> yeah. with the highlights. Punk she's rock. just like, she, yeah, she comes off with being, she comes off with like, why are we even doing this? Like, let's just not do this anymore. And let's just, you have friends. We're friends now. Like why yeah. even try to do this? And their other girl's like, fuck you. We all have our reasons. And we, we see the, like the, the girl, you know, with the darker skin, who's, I think it's like a CEO or something. I'm not sure what her deal is, but bro, her sister tried to like kill her. And she's got like these gnarly scars. I was like, oh my God, this show is just, yeah, it's so fucking good. There's just well, so much in it. She said her sister stabbed her in the back. Attacked her. Yes, yeah. attacked her. And then she after said, attacking her. I'm pretty sure she said stabbed specifically. And well, then yeah. when I saw the scar, I was like, bro, that's you should not describe that as a stab. That is way worse. I Those don't are know stabs. what happened. I guess she she didn't imply she didn't say how many stabs exactly. there was. Exactly. It was a like, stabbing. Yeah. Yeah. She, but man, I'm saying I her sister tried to kill one, her. And then her whole back was just scars. Tore up. Yeah. I was like, some yeah. So like I said, shit. Her sister tried to kill her, and then after she did that, she went and jumped off her bridge. And so, you know, she was she told heard about it when she was in the hospital recovering. And she's just I like I love what she said. She was just like, fuck her. I'm doing this for fucking me. You know, like and I was like, yeah, I, I really like that. I don't know if it's the healthiest thing, but this is what she's doing to like to get through all of this. Like, yeah, man, I'm fucking with it. It's a great show. You know, jokingly, I said Dr. Stone was the best you know show of, of the season, and it's not. It's obviously the Promise Neverland recap episode. JK, got you. Um, if you aren't watching uh, <laughs> Wonder Egg Priority. Wonder Egg Priority. You are missing out, like, 100%. Um, this is that new show that might only go on, should probably only go on for a season. Mm -hmm. But it's, like, top-notch, one of the best shows that I've seen in such a long time. Who is it again? It's the guys, it's the people that did uh, the Magical Girl Raising Projects, right? Isn't it the same people? Nah, man. It's not them? Who is it? It's our boys. Is it Cloverworks? It's our boys, yeah. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, it's great. Dude, Cloverworks um, is absolutely blowing it out of the water. They're doing Wonder Egg Priority. They're doing Hori Mia. Hori and Mia. they're doing, at the same time, people are still loving it, even though I'm not. Promise Neverland. Yeah, they are right. having well, a big season. What I was going to say was, um, yeah, it, if you're not watching this show, it's probably because you don't have Funimation. And we were, you and I were talking about this. Funimation does suck sometimes, but honestly, like at this point, you really need it. Uh, they Crunchyroll has gotten some of the stuff. Like they picked up Cells at Work that was only on Funimation before this. Um, fucking, it turns out Attack on Titan's also on Hulu, so you don't even actually need Crunchyroll just for that. There's a lot of uh, stuff that's also on Funimation that is on Crunchyroll, or that I think Hulu and Funimation share a bigger library than uh, Crunchyroll, Crunchyroll and, and Hulu. Okay, I don't know. What I'm saying is like. In the past, I we would argue like, hey, if you had to get one, get Crunchyroll. This season, it doesn't it doesn't feel like that at all. Like it honestly, no. the one to have is Funimation. Their shows and are just really top notch. Crunchyroll has so many amazing shows on it, of course. But yeah. if you're trying to keep up with shows that are airing right now, 
Funimation. There's there's no yeah. doubt. I mean, the only thing that you're watching that's on Crunchyroll, uh, there is Attack on Titan and Doctor Stone. Doctor mm-hmm. Stone's the only one that you wouldn't be able to watch on some other platform. Yeah, true. So, and I don't uh, okay. even know how true that is. I I don't know. I don't. Th- I think you can only. I think I can only watch it there. Honestly, uh, Promise Neverland. That's on Hulu. This week was a recap. I didn't watch it. Um, uh, and I, only, I, I, I only, read that it was an exact recap. It didn't even add anything new. And that's what it was. Like if if I didn't bother because I figured that you would find out. And if it's adding anything, like little maybe I'd have watched it. But I was like, you know what? It's only been six episodes, seven episodes, or whatever. I know what happened in the last seven episodes. I'm. I don't need a recap. Hopefully next week there'll be a new episode for me to enjoy and trip to hate. So Zeri's looking at that. Cross my fingers. Uh, the last show I got around to this week was Attack on Titan. And um, I I had asked you before we started like recording um, what happened in the episode just because it it was kind of forgettable. I was like, hey, how did that end? Um, and I had I had to second guess myself. I was like, did I actually watch this episode? I, just because it was kind of slow. Um, nothing super exciting happens there's a lot of characters talking um we get to see it's back at like the present day or whatever or yeah you know now and we get to see what's going on and it also jumps back to the past it's it's not (sighs) got more sasha time don't worry we did which was nice um and then we also got uh we got to see historia and see what she's up to it's like okay cool she's doing shit good for her um and then the episode ended and it ended it was with like kind of like a ominous ending and i go all right maybe next week maybe next week i'll have more fun but i'm still excited for the show i just we're close i feel like it's what it's only 14 episodes it's gonna be this is episode I 16 i thought it was 14 it's probably 16 but we're, we're we're at eight episodes right that's halfway so shit better fucking start popping off because uh I don't know how this is gonna end. I have no clue, and I really don't want to, you know, spoil it for myself. So I want it to end, and then I can be like, "Great, I finished it." And then maybe one day read the manga and be like, "Was it better? Who knows?" So that's it. That's what I watched for anime. Actually, I also watched the final season of a uh, uh, My Hero, and that's because my nephew was watching it in English, and he got to the the raid part, and I was just like, "I can't watch this um, one episode at a time with him," you know. Cause like kind of sit there, so I was like, I have to, I had to finish it. So I just while I was working on my animation, it was playing in the background, and I managed to watch all of the most recent seasons. I was like, cool, that's right, that's how that season ended. Dope, 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 dope. So I'm excited for whenever season five drops. All right, dude, what have you been watching? Because I know you watch stuff that I don't watch. I think it's interesting that you're watching my hero again. Uh, when does the next season come out? Summer 2021. Okay. We're getting there. We're almost there. Yes. Uh, so yeah, I watched more of Jobless Reincarnation, and this latest episode, he is now like working a job. He's a tutor, uh, so he's teaching this girl how to do magic, amongst other things, and he's uh, just kind of like helping them out in general. Uh, but their whole situation is she would not trust him. She didn't trust him at all. Can't blame her. Um, and then they had a whole plan set up. She's also like very stuck up and very obnoxious. Uh, she's a little girl, but she's older than him and she doesn't want to listen to him because he's younger than her. She's nine. He's seven, whatever. Uh, then they were going to set up this like fake kidnapping and show like, oh, this is why magic's good. Like, see, don't you want to learn magic now? But then they got for real kidnapped and it turned into a whole ordeal. Uh, where she got the shit kicked out of her and he healed her and was like, see, it's pretty important, huh? And kept being a teacher the whole time that they're in this like life or death situation. And then he understood that uh, sword play, sword fighting, <laughs> they have different styles in this world. And he understood uh, how important it is and how much it can change things if you are good at fighting with swords, if you have like special styles. Because he was fighting some dude and the guy moved faster than he could move or process. And the only reason he didn't die is because he got saved by another sword person who also could move insanely fast uh, due to their, like, fighting style, which is kind of like magic. Anyways, it's an episode about that and his whole, like, 
life, it flashes by a lot of time, uh, but his whole life there has improved and he's bringing improvements. Like she's getting burnt out because she's like tutoring and training seven days a week. The trainers are getting burnt out because of that. And he's like, we should go to the six day schedule. That way it gives people time to like, you know, rest. He's like, plus that way I don't have to work all day. Then come home and set my curriculum for the next day. <laughs> like every single day. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's, it's fine. His whole goal <laughs> is to make enough money so that him and the girl from his hometown can go and uh, study magic at school, at, like, magic college. So, that's still his goal. It's gonna happen. It seems like it's gonna happen soonish. They're all uh, kind of caring about each other in this new area and improving each other. So, he's got nothing but growth. And the show looks fucking good, but man, it still has that quota of uncomfortable sexual things that are happening <laughs> all the time. He's seven, and he she's nine, and she's sleepy, and he's taken off her panties, and she's, like, delirious and doesn't know what's happening, and he's clearly taking advantage of her, and these are children, and I felt weird. He's also 30, like, something. It's... Mentally, yes. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's fucked up. Uh, yeah. I also... Kind of related to that, not really related to that, but we'll get there. Uh, earlier this week, I watched this little uh, video. It was, it was like a news segment on this kid whose mother grew up in an Aboriginal tribe, and she grew up there. This kid's dad was actually uh, the person that was researching their culture and was writing everything down and studying them and getting a whole like a whole fucking book about this tribe uh, and letting people know that they exist in the Amazon. And yeah, then he married somebody from that tribe, had a few kids and she left all the kids and went back to her tribe. Uh, even though they were in like school and whatnot. So uh, one of them, I don't remember how old he was, if he was the oldest one, youngest one, middle one, whatever. But he didn't want to tell anybody where his mom went or what happened. So he would say that she died in a car accident uh, because it's easier than explaining, oh, my mom went back to her tribe in the Amazon mm -hmm. uh, that nobody knows and there's no way exists, to contact yeah. them and all that. Uh, so, yeah, that whole thing. I'm like, that's a weird kind of messed up situation in general. Like, ethically, is it OK for this person that's going there to do this? study on people is it ethically okay to remove them from the world that they know and bring them back to the city and it seemed like she was confused by everything and apparently she thought that like the first time that they saw a uh, jeep she thought that it was uh some kind of an animal that was growling at them because of the motor so she was terrified mm -hmm. of it right and then they get back and they they have this whole life and the pictures of her uh in the city look like she's any old ordinary mom when she's really like in the biggest culture shock of all time. Right. So she went back home. I can't blame her at all for doing that. Uh, but I think it's so bizarre from a uh, like scientific perspective to marry somebody in that kind of situation. Yeah, yeah, to, right. Or to like, to kind of like ha have a family with them, bring them back to the United States and all that. Yeah. To, uh, to like, insert yourself into this culture right where he's like mm -hmm. i'm here to study you guys and now i'm like cool i'm also fucking around with you guys uh when you were talking about this i assumed it was on reddit and then i instantly assumed it was am i the asshole so it was like it's like yeah like i was like i was like i was trying to like write it in my head i was like so i tell people my mom it's like i tell my people my mom died in a car accident instead of explaining to them that she went back to her aboriginal tribe am i the asshole you know kind of post. we're not even there juan uh this is a <laughs> new segment that i watched oh, but I, well, oh you get, i thought you just got all your news from reddit i didn't think you actually got like i think i saw it on twitter oh wow i don't know it was it was somewhere but the point of it is this whole time i was thinking the same thing that you're thinking that we haven't even discussed what that you know she was an adult she wasn't she was 13 years old oh she was a child oh i wow. fucking okay. i was blown away i was like what the fuck <laughs> that didn't even come up until later 
when it oh turns out God, that he revealed age. how old she is. And this dude is like in his 20s. And he was like, yeah, my mom's like just about to turn 40. And I'm like, wait, hang on a second. What the fuck? Like, <laughs> so, Am I, I the asshole? My mom is my age. <laughs> yeah. The whole time I'm reading it, I'm just like. Okay, yeah, I don't know, like, personally, just, like, I don't really know, I feel like that's some, like, weird moral boundaries that, like, haven't been explored too often, but I feel like I remember reading about something and it being super fucked up to do that, but, like, I don't know, because I don't know the limits of love. Oh, okay, she was a child? How, how did this happen? What the fuck? Just whole thing's know, crazy. Uh, the dad funny. did not look like he was just about to turn 40. Let's just put it that way. Um, but yeah, it was it was an interesting segment. And I was just thinking of that because I'm just like, this kid is clearly like not... Like he's been a part of this world for seven years now. But he's also a full-grown adult. And it like definitely has some weird moral boundaries of like yes yeah, so okay there's an ambiguity yeah. there he's a he's child like, but he has the the mentality of an adult and he's in a different mm-hmm. world and it's an override overall like very sexualized world and just like so many different things i don't know it was it was more interesting um watching that and having it like something else to compare it to watching it at the same time anyways sells at work code black uh <laughs> Dude's getting old, essentially. Uh, they talked about old people smell and how that works, uh, which I was not expecting at all. And there's like a kidney failure going on, and like everything's pretty fucked up, or like liver failure. I think it's liver failure. Uh, everything is going wrong with the body. It's a wild time. That's all it is. Skate the Infinity, uh, the latest episode was just, like, our boys having a beach episode together. It was, like, a very chill, fun time. Um, because it wasn't so much a beach episode, but it also was a beach episode. It was great. Loved it. Uh, Cells at Work, regular. It's just more of regular. the same stuff. Yeah. I don't know. Like, bacteria comes they fight it off and now uh we're in the cancer storyline again that's that's where we're at okay so yeah other side picnic we are are gone from the military meat train. camp meat train better <laughs> deliver that's all i remember yep uh meat train they are they actually teleported into the meat train and now they don't know where they are they're somewhere else hmm so it wasn't a sexual thing. It's just a train made out of meat. It wasn't even that. It was a train like full of meat, and the meat is humans. I think is the idea. That's I not as sexy whatever. as I thought it'd be, but whatever. Next episode is called Resort Night at the World's Edge. So we'll have a fun time with that. Uh, yeah. And then normally I would have complained about the Promised Neverland, but this episode I've already complained about everything there is in the Promised Neverland. So. We get a break this week, boys. We don't have to hear Trip thrash Fucking our favorite wine. anime. Uh, actually, <laughs> well, actually, uh, <laughs> Sister Crone comes in at this point, and then she dive bombs the group of kids, and nobody expects it. And uh, no spoilers, dude. You promised. Half of the people are snake people now. And... Oh my god! Are we done? Can we do news? Or yeah, one more thing. No, nah, dude, I'm ready to talk about the news. Fuck it, let's do it. What's the news, man? Uh, Netflix is making a Dota anime. I saw that. Yeah, interesting. Uh-huh. I'm not too familiar with the Dota lore. I don't think I even ever, I don't think I've ever played Dota, but uh, I'm gonna watch it just because uh, sounds interesting. I feel like it's gonna be another one of those shows like Castlevania where like I'm yeah. into it, but I'm also not into it. So yeah. I'm excited to watch it and see how I feel, uh, yeah. unless they do some like Blood of Zeus shit, in which case I don't even want to get near it. It's just I don't not think we'll do it. that. I think it'll be more along the lines of Castlevania, also. Or if we get really lucky, our boys at Polygon give it the you know well one two. Hey, let's check up on Polygon. <laughs> how are they doing? Still my least favorite. Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> just every single time. Uh, so yeah, Princess Principal Crown Handler Chapter Two movie is gonna come out in fall this year 
<laughs> I haven't thought about Princess Principal in a very long time. You remember how they were like, uh, guys, we're going to give you so many Princess Principal movies. And I was like, that's going to be cool. And then it turned out that, uh, yeah, they they aren't really going to be able to send it to the U.S. that easily. It's, yeah. I don't know, it's going to be one of those messy things. Um, it's going to be like a Black Fox situation where it's just like, oh, cool, the premiere. It's just on Crunchyroll, I guess. Never mind, like... Whatever, we could all watch it. Yeah. Um yeah, but they're they're still making them. So I, I hadn't heard anything in a while either. It's Good exciting. For them. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. I just like the steampunk, like cyberpunk combo. No, no, no. We're not fans of steampunk. It's Ron Podcast stance, very clear. Leandra, when she was a part of us, said she doesn't like steampunk, so we don't like steampunk. Done. That's just the way it goes. Done. Hey, Netflix is going to support Wit Studios' animated training program. Uh, it's going to start in April and should help out a bunch in the anime industry. You know what What I think? I think it's a fucking great idea because Wit Studio is the best. Well, one of the best. They're going to pay 10 successful applicants all tuition and living expenses, dog. Dude, that is sick. Good job, Netflix. Way to do something right. All right. Um, but yeah, it's like, I don't know the money is pretty tight in the animation industry they don't Mm -hmm. pay out that well in japan uh so this is hopefully going to be fucking huge for people i don't know we'll see 10 lucky very lucky people people yeah uh demon slayer season two don't care wait i thought it was done no no no. i think the manga is done i don't know i don't care good for you demon slayer season two congratulations you got what you wanted (laughs) I was when I saw this, I was like, "It's, it's just being announced." Hmm. I didn't. I mean, hmm. Hmm. you just don't know. You don't know. The until movie you know, is really good. Know. In the movie, like the best movie ever, heard ever. Yeah, it's not on uh, any platforms for streaming yet, and yep, we just gotta wait. The movie okay. that apparently broke all records. <sighs> it's fine. Um, what else you got? Nothing. That's it? That's it. You don't All have right, to act dude. so happy about it. Let's talk about this week's topic, shall we? Which is... Grimgar. Ashes and Illusions. That's right, Juan. It's made by the studio A1 Pictures. You might know them from such things as Sword Art Online. Your Lie in April and Erased. Oh, I was going to say Erased, but yeah. You were oh, going to say a And uh, what's the third one? erased fucking killed it we'll edit that killed in post it. no we won't yeah we'll, we'll uh, do it in post. <laughs> never do that yeah man uh this this fucking anime not even close to being on our radar uh we were referred to watch it from jefferson what and up jefferson i i was looking through a bunch of like obscure oh what do you recommend that's something you know people wouldn't expect what's the anime with the twist like a bunch of different topics that people were into just looking for, I don't know, as much new shit as possible. And somebody brought up Grimgar again, and I was like, all right, let's see whatever picture they posted. And went, oh, that looks kind of pretty. Because you never know what it's going to look like based off of the like title card poster thing. Mm-hmm. You only really know from screenshots and clips. Uh, so I saw that and was like, that's kind of pretty. And it's got this like kind of watercolor style to its environments and yeah. whatnot every once in a while. It looks really, really good um, and unique. Yeah. So then I saw what it was about after that. Uh, of course, the name Grimgar, Ashes and Illusions, you're immediately drawn to like fantasy type shit. And mm-hmm. that's pretty much what you get. But who would have thought it's an isekai? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, that is... <laughs> that is a very good thing um, because the, the sh- I, I I didn't know anything about it. I think I'd heard it. I think my friend Tim had mentioned it to me. He's like, hey, have you seen this one? And I was just like, no. And, and I don't think we've seen it because it's before our, our time of the pod or whatever. Or we yeah. just kind of missed it. Um, and he said, hey, you should check it out. And I was like, okay. And Tim's a huge fan of anything fantasy. Like, you know, especially like knights, fucking swords, magic. And I was like, cool. And I'm not super into it but I'm not like against it. I'm like, Meh, I'll watch it. So I had heard about it. So when you said, Hey, let's watch Grimgar. I was like, yeah, dude, instantly let's fucking do it. Um, and going into it, I really didn't know what to expect. And I didn't either. And fairly quickly, I was just like, Oh cool. It's an isekai. 
can, I can turn off my brain. I also watched it in English, so I was like, don't have to pay too much attention. Um, and what I, I want to say about it, um, it wasn't, I'm not going to say the show was like perfect or amazing or anything, but what I did like about it is that it did things um, that I didn't expect it to do. Like, it's like, I expected yeah. it to follow an isekai formula that I'm pretty used to, um, but it, it really didn't, um, especially when it came to pacing of the show. It's 12 episodes, and and most isekais I, you know, I, I expect our main character to kind of suck ass in the beginning and then get better and then become the best or just instantly be the best and then continue to be the best kind of thing. Nah. No. And in this show, they start, they, for a huge chunk of the show, they're just kind of really bad at what they're doing. And it's not to the very end where they're, I still wouldn't say they're amazing, but they're They got better. like, yeah, they got a lot better and they got lucky. You know, oh it's, yeah, it's a sure. little bit of that, which uh, I really like. It was refreshing to just have kind mm-hmm. of like a a chilled out. You know what? We're in this magic world, but we're not anything fantastic. Uh, which is kind of how we're not the chosen ones, right? Which is such a gimmick, right? There's like they just yeah. showed up, and they showed up with like I think there's twelve of them. Like twelve people show up at the same time in this world, and they're really quickly you know told like, hey, welcome to this world. Uh, you guys got to do this thing and hunt monsters or whatever and have a good time. And that was it. It wasn't like, let me explain to you how your powers work. Let me explain to you how levels work. We didn't see, you know how like they, like a lot of isekais now will do the thing where they'll have like a heads up display and they can see their fucking special tree or whatever. None of that. Which I really liked. I really appreciated that. They would talk about skills like they would like in a video game. Like, Hey, I've acquired this skill. But But when they acquired this skill... They paid for it, and then also you saw them a few clips of a character going and training and learning how to do that skill. And so whenever they said, "Oh, we got a new skill," in my head, I was like, "Cool." They also spent, they made the money, spent the money, and then took the time to learn that actual skill, which is a very um, like MMO RPG, like old school mm-hmm. kind of idea uh, concept. Yeah. And this, of course, was based off of a light novel. I feel like yeah. most of these uh, interesting, well done isekai type things are based off of light novels. Right. Um, and this didn't need to be an isekai. I feel like that tarnished its reputation a little bit, but it allowed it for these like teenager slash adults. I'm not sure how old they were, um, as a group. Yeah. It allowed for them to learn everything at the same pace as the audience, um, about the world. Yeah. I think I agree. Like, especially, especially because in most isekais, we'll see the character be like, well, this isn't like it was back in, you know, when I was on Earth or when I was alive or whatever, because, you know, they'll know that they died and yeah. went to a fantasy world. In this one, what they did, they'd be like, they would say stuff like, oh, you can't spend all day laying there, you know, playing video games. And then they'd go, wait, what does that word mean? And they would all kind of collectively be like, we no, we've heard that word. We say that word and it doesn't seem weird. I think that only happened in the first episode and then they never did anything like that again. No, though. they they did it they did it later too, okay. where they but they, they said a different word and they go, Ah, oh, that sounds so familiar. And by the end of the show, especially by later in the show, um, the characters would they'd never brought up being you know, saying words like that. Instead, I think we our main character does a lot of uh internal monologues and stuff. So he'll be like, Yeah, because oh, especially in the beginning, he'd be like, This is our te- this is our third day in grimgar this is our 10th day in grimgar at a certain point she goes i don't know what day this is in grimgar anymore like i've lost track and whatever remnants of the world before this is not important because we are now just in grimgar and i like that too um because like it does give us the ability to have all these characters that i i assumed they were like late teens um but a couple of them look maybe like like in their 20s yeah but we didn't have to, they didn't have to be a convoluted way of like them being summoned there and hey, you're here for a special purpose or like, hey, you know, we're seeing them grow up as children and then you, they, they had to just learn about this world instantly being dropped in. Yeah. And I wish, I don't know. I, I get it why they did it, but I also agree like, is this really an isekai? Kind of like barely, you know, they, just because they know that they were from another world and this is a new world. We've praised it a lot now. Um, Let's talk about the bad problems. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. uh, So just in case you didn't know, Juan, there was actually a special episode of this that we didn't get to see. Um, I thought there was two. Isn't there two OVAs or just the one? uh, One more centimeter? I'm not sure. 
But I know that there's there is there is uh, there is at least something that we didn't get to watch because we only watched the twelve episodes. It's a special. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. Uh, which came out with the first Blu-ray DVD release, right. Right. and it's entirely about um, the ending of the second episode, which is the boys trying to sneak in on the girls bathing, <laughs> and they have a whole special episode dedicated to that. Uh, it's not unusual. This show has so much fan service and the thing mm-hmm. that like i i kept feeling like really hits home about s- fan service and whether or not it should exist in certain shows uh i feel like the thing that was hitting home for me watching this was it's so insanely unnecessary and changes the tone in this show but mm-hmm. if i'm watching jobless reincarnation it feels like it's a part of the world and plot in the way that right. they're doing things. So so the issue isn't necessarily that the characters are over-sexualizing each other. Uh, it's, it's that the tone completely changes so frequently to where you're in the middle of a fight... We gotta watch these boobs jiggle really quick. It's not <laughs> like it's a, it's a normal fight. It's like life and death all the yeah, time. Yeah. They're like... All right, but look at the ass, though. And, oh, man, look at her midriff right there. That's going to be cool. <laughs> hey, I yeah, need the- to get better clothes uh, that cover me up more. Like, they did wind up addressing that. Right, right. But they still sexualized these characters consistently. The the best one, I would say the one that would just really felt out of note. Because it happens a lot. You know, it was just like, he's just like, I, they're not wearing panties because they're doing the laundry. Oh, my God, I'm going to see some fucking, you know, some unpantied stuff. The one that really got me, I was like, I can't fucking believe this. He goes on a walk on his day off or whatever. He ends up running into their new mage or whatever. Come down, sit down, have some coffee. She leans over to pet a cat. He looks at the cat and then instantly starts ogling her legs, you know, just like all the way up. And I go, are you fucking serious, dude? Literally like, all the time. Like you can't, you can't just keep your dick, you know, calm for like 20 seconds. Um, You know what? <laughs> I think that um, very quickly, I like I figured out that like, hey man, this is gonna be all the time sexy time. Like Grimgar, people be fucking in Grimgar. Like that's just kind of like, even though they don't fuck, we don't see them fuck. I'm like, this I'm is saying, the least amount of fucking for sexuality but, but, that I've seen. In but a what long I'm time. saying, what I'm saying is like the way that they, you know, they they everything is sexy. Everything has to be sexy. Like the fact that his teacher, yeah, we wears, need to talk about how the we have <laughs> instructor teacher. Like this is whatever. This is it. It really did blow my mind because he's he the main character joins his guild and the guild he chooses is a thief guild and he meets his the person that's going to train him or whatever and she's got like a really great body right like like nice butt nice tits but what blew my mind was that not only did she acquire underboob which is like a huge thing right she also has overboob you know like so it's just like one strand of material so it's like her, her shirt has a giant cropped out section for her tits then she has her tits coming out. And then a band that just covers where her nipples would be. And I was like, I've never seen that. Like that, that has blown my mind. Usually you get one or the other. You usually you get like the bust or the underboob. I've I have been spoiled to, to no end. How, how they've they've done the impossible. They've shown both of it. And she is wearing like the tiniest shorts ever. It's it's quite a, I was super impressed. It's like how did they how did they come? It's the most sexiest anime thing they could have done and they did it. They and she's grappling the with them and yeah she's, she's like rest- sitting oh, on his stomach on his and dick. like wiggling no, around absolutely sitting on his crotch it, no way it was his, it was like his it was his abs that was the idea because she was like i know i know juan i am with you okay i know you're making a face right now but she was like <laughs> all right well if you're not training then while you're resting that's gonna be sit-ups and then he was like uh i'm so tired i don't want to do that and she's like you can just talk to me instead He's like, I'll do that one, and jumps onto his stomach, his abs, Mm -hmm. uh, is the way that it looked like they were trying to do it. But then it was very much like, but guys, he's actually grinding, he's getting his dick all grinded on from his teacher, isn't that great, you guys? We we love that shit. It was so fucking (laughs) stupid. Dude, what's, what's, what they got me to was uh, him and and the hunter in the party have an emotional moment in the rain, like they're both mourning the loss of of a, a party member. And they're both, you know, crying and holding each other. And then they're just like sexily holding each other in the rain very provocatively. Well, I, I thought they like, were, I thought it was going to lead into a plot line of them like getting together romantically. Getting together. I, but, I, I thought uh, so nope. too. Nope. And then, uh, then the other character, the other girl character in the party, 
um, that's been there since the beginning, you know, comes out of the shower with her fucking towel wrapping around her boobs and like she sees this and it's like it's just a well, collection just of peeking all peeking through a window and it's just this it's everything it's it's i think perfect that a uh yeah i think that a younger me would have been like <laughs> nice but you know it super was mature 27 year old juan is like you know what this is excessive this no, is a little it, much it was just excessive all around non-stop yeah, yeah. but uh, it's frustrating because if you removed all of that, you would have like the core of a really solid fantasy world and show. I, yeah. Uh, to where I, these characters are struggling against the most basic enemy, goblins in this goblins. world. Um, and they eventually like learn how to overcome them and whatnot. But when they were first fighting goblins, they're like, "Holy shit! It's six or whatever of us." Uh, that we got to take out one. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Um. And I love that. I love that they were having so much trouble with just one little shitty dude. And uh, they clearly overcome him right away. But Mm -hmm. as they progress, it's still like, all right, well, we got to figure out how to take on more than one at once. That's going to be a thing we have to worry about. They're like constantly struggling with it. Mm -hmm. And they get slowly better and better. Um, In the, the most simple ways, the way that the show progresses is really fluid it, it's slow but then you will get like a gap where it goes pretty quickly um and i'm glad that they do that they really put an emphasis on okay we're learning and now we're learning some more and we're dealing with our emotions and now we're gonna pass some time you've gotten a lot better you're still dealing with your emotions but you have figured out how to do this thing mm-hmm. um so it was more of an emotional journey than it was a journey of skill or expertise Which I Mm -hmm. love. I love that shit. And like all my favorite fucking anime have great both. And this could have fallen into that category if it wasn't filled with really stupid relationship slash fan service stuff. Because I was fully committed to have these characters date each other or whatever. But instead it was just like, nope, I'm just going to ogle them. I'm going to look at their titties. I'm going to look at their legs. And then uh, they, they rarely put emphasis on dudes. And mm-hmm. that pissed me off, too. I like it when it's equal. I like it when it's not just the guys that are ogling the girls, but the girls have to be into the guys, too. Or a right. guy could be into a guy or a girl a girl. But let's be honest, it's anime. We're not going to do that. We do want that smut with substance. Uh, yeah. <laughs> those those are all really good points. I will say that, yeah, um, maybe just because this level of fan service and this level of etchy stuff isn't something that you and I are used to or very, you know, we're used to, Juan, we've watched to. like a million what, fucking what anime. What I mean is, what I mean is it's not what we look for no. in our anime. No, it's, um, it's a deterrent. It's not something that like, it's not like, we, we, it's not like something we catalog. Like when we watch Mob Psycho, we go, we know Mob Psycho was good, but there wasn't enough tits in it kind of thing. But for people who don't do like shows that are like this, I feel like this is probably one of the best shows I've seen like this. Cause like I said, like you said, like the way the story was told, the way the characters, you know, come together and slowly learn and stuff. Those things are all really fun and they're really, and they're really good. And guess what? You little monsters, you get to see tits and legs and fucking midriff and under boob and over boob. Right. Um, congratulations. Uh, what I, what I did want to say was, I also think the show looks really good. Like the watercolor, like just like the painting that we saw, you know, from the, the cover. Um, I, I also saw that image like, yeah, that's nice in the world the world is watercolored like you know for the most part and the animation i i I thought was done really well i enjoyed i really liked that whenever the the main character would go into the zone and kind of see that weird stream with the knife or whatever Mm -hmm. i really enjoyed that i i don't know what why maybe just the visual effect and like him talking about like i don't know well it's the way that it was was. mysterious it was like being guided by something else it was doing demon slayer before demon slayer was you know it was it reminded me of uh kuroko kuroko's basketball when he's just like i'm in the zone and everything would slow down and shit would go lightningy so yeah that there's things i really liked oh also really liked his when he when he did learn the sexy ability which was like the spider grapple and he would just like jump on people and grab them really weird and And just stab them in the i was like oh that's so fucking hardcore um I've never been a real big fan of the thief in like, like D and D or rogue characters. Like I'm not like, oh, that's the character I'd like to play. But seeing this thing, I was like, that was pretty cool. You know, he's got a little little knife. He jumps up and stabs people. Um, I like the components of them learning. You know, how they work together. Uh, I did. I was wrong about one thing, and I'm kind of okay with it, just because I don't think the show that I thought it was, what I thought was going to happen, was the show that this was supposed to be, like. 
um, spoilers for the show. Here we go. I'm going to spoil stuff. It's uh, uh, six years old now? Five years yeah, old? Yeah. So, so if you want to go watch it, go watch it. Have a good time. Um, but their first mage, the one that's their first leader or whatever, um, before he dies, you know, he's the one that's plotting everything, kind of keeping everyone together. Um, I had for some reason thought, you know, like, you know what? I think this guy is going to be like going to steal their money and then buy himself one of those passes and just kind of ditch them and be like, fuck you guys. You guys are a bunch of nerds. Um, and then when like, as the thing went on, I was like, it's either that in my head. I was like, or he's going to fucking die. Cause he's the only like level headed good person <laughs> Dude, in the yeah. group or whatever. Besides, besides the guy that cooks, he's good, but he has his faults, right? Like he's not like a really, I think that our main guy. character, uh, the big boy and the healer, all pretty solid characters yeah uh, that have their own like little faults here and there but then the other three did not get very fleshed out for a while in like Until why I, they're an asset yeah um because <laughs> what because what i thought um what, what what i started realizing was our main character was kind of just like a shittier version of the mage like the leader you know like the guy that's like like as far as personality goes personality wise okay. and I, and <laughs> i'm I, like i was like <laughs> and, and when i realized that i was like oh this guy has to die. Like he has to die to let this other guy grow into that role of becoming the leader. And when he did die, I was like, oh no, he fucking died. Also, <laughs> when I was watching the thing, like the intro, like there's six of them out there. I was like, I only like there were six of them? There's seven of them. Three girls, four boys. Yeah, there's seven of them. And I go, I wonder when this one of them's character's a, gonna come. One in. of them's an extra girl. I was like, where's the next girl? And then when our homie died, I was like, oh, they're going to replace him. They got to bring a new mage in. I liked her backstory too. You know, she had like, you know, damage and she was like, I'm not going to heal everybody because in the past I did that and that really fucked people up. I was like, oh, I like her a lot. I thought her character growth was good. Um, I also, I think what I really liked also was the fact that there was other people that were also showed up in the world with them at the same time. And we see that they're also having success in this world and like, but at no point is it like, hey, man, I'm that dude. Remember, let's try to go back to Earth. It never comes up. They're in Grimgar. It's a Grimgar thing. I don't know, man. I I enjoyed it, actually. I, I think I had a good time. I've uh, It's not, like, amazing. I don't think I can recommend this to, like, a lot of people. I feel like there's some people that can be like, hey, go check this out. Um, but it's not, a, like, a must-watch by any means. And it's not, like a, like, a show that's, like, an instant classic because of the etchy stuff uh, and the fan service. Like, it's just, it's just a little too much. Um uh what was i gonna say yeah i think i was gonna say something else but you go ahead and think of say what you gotta say and then i'll maybe remember sure uh for any fantasy sticklers out there uh juan was saying mages were the healers but that don't worry it's well, priests they're priests okay yeah, yeah priests which is uh yeah. kind of a an ongoing theme with the character like having the whole like going to the temple and and doing religious and they like pray for each kill that they have. I like that. I like the the reality that they put with these classes. Um cuz you do have a mage and she's the most whatever character that could have been a lot cooler but instead they were like she's just shy and that's it. I'm like very cool. <laughs> and then the uh the hunter who I I liked at times and other times felt like they didn't give enough like personality or dialogue or thought behind her. Um, I liked kind of what she had going on, but we didn't really get to see anything specific for her class. Uh, mm -hmm. she was just kind of like an all around kind of person. Um, she, she said, Hey, I want to, I want to get a, like a wolf and like have a pet. And I was like, that'd be cool. But we never got to actually see that, which, uh, no. which would have been fun. Uh, and then, yeah, the thief being like a rogue, essentially some kind of a character like that. Uh, just very fast, use a small daggers uh knives as weapons and can like throw knives and shit uh his whole deal was interesting because he wasn't like even though he was a thief there was nothing behind the way that he did things that felt extra sneaky uh it was just him like waiting a lot uh <laughs> i don't know it felt weird but then he wound up being very powerful as it went on um and then you have the giant man who's just a warrior, and he has the mm -hmm. biggest fucking weapons of all time. Uh, Thank you. Which is pretty fun. And finally, the character that is like the fun, quirky, off-brand class, the Dark Knight. Uh, yeah. Where he's able to like communicate with this spirit that only he could see. Uh, this he demon. can make a pact with the demon. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. 
and um, every once in a while the demon could help him, but sometimes not. And he was just a very aggressive, fast fighting kind of person. But he also mm-hmm. had moves that allowed him to like back away from combat really quickly. And he was the most like video game out of everybody, I think. Um, just in that, like, is, he would yell the name of his, his moves. attacks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which just is very the kind funny. of person he was. So whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, also the way that everything was animated, he just kind of like slid forward to do like a big attack, and then would just like swipe. Uh, I don't know a magical swipe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With his was, sword. yeah. It was it was just very anime, right? Like especially the way he the way he had used his weapons, the way he attacked. I think it was funny because like the the narrator, right? The main character is just like so and so loves to yell off the names of attacks. Like I don't fucking know why, but that's just what he does. And I was just like, yeah, I don't like him. But I feel like he's the character I'm not supposed to really like. You know, yeah. he's just kind of annoying. And that's absolutely what he was. Um, but I liked the idea of them having like all pretty basic, normal kinds of classes, uh, Mm -hmm. as far as like RPG D and D type worlds go. And then they're like, and this is the fucking weird one. (laughs) Yeah. 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 I don't know. Uh, it was the off brand. It was enjoyable. Uh, one of the things that I think might have kept this show aside from all the fan service, uh, one of the things that I think might've kept this show from being on more people's radar is that the characters, while they were entertaining and interesting, they didn't really have that strong bond or connection that I think a lot of people look for in their main cast of characters. Um, even though they were like, oh, yeah, you know, these characters feel better and look at how much confidence they have and look at how much they like this person. It felt like it was very much telling us that and it wasn't showing us that or like having fun dialogue that showed that the characters bonded in some way. Yeah. Um, it was know? a lot of them being like him being like, we're getting better at teamwork or whatever, but it wasn't ever like them having just the time sitting there and talking about stuff. Um, and, and I think unless it was annoying, like dramatic, the annoying kid even had a really good moment where he's just like, we're just a party. We're not a fucking family kind of thing. You know, I was like, I mean, he's making a good point. Like nothing leads me to believe that you're willing to like, to die for this person because you guys haven't had those super close bonding moments kind of thing. Mm-hmm um but he kept saying like oh we're getting closer like i think he thought that they were kind of a family and the other guy's like no i'm i'm more with him like is is even though i didn't like his decisions like, but he was playing his role and he was getting his job done so he's like hey am i fucking up the party he's like no am i doing what i'm supposed to do it's cool then, then back the fuck off me like leave me alone and i was like this is this is like an actual i feel like a realistic argument that two people with like different I personalities could actually have I, I really enjoyed that. I like that yeah, whole yeah. aspect of they were not like a tightly knit team. Exactly. Mm-hmm. They were in some ways, but they weren't in other ways. Um, I really like that aspect of it. It felt more authentic for right. the story. Um, the show had a lot of things that I really, really liked as far as fantasy worlds and storytelling mm-hmm. goes. It also had a lot of things that I really didn't like. Which puts this somewhere in the, uh, I'm not going to recommend it to anybody, but if you watch it, I want to know kind of what you think, how yeah. you felt. Yeah, it's it's an interesting anime to talk about. Like, I already kind of know what you were going to say about it, yeah. uh, just because I'm familiar with your taste. But it's such a pretty looking show with some really, really cool fantasy stuff that goes on. Mm-hmm. I had a bad idea of how large the world was. I was bummed yeah. we didn't get to see any maps or like books or stuff like that that I like to see, but whatever. No, I don't get what I, I want. It's not all the time. I agree. Like um that's something I struggled with like understanding the scope of the the larger world. Yeah. I was like I feel like I haven't really left this town we've literally gone from where they stay to this old city where they hunt goblins and then what we eventually make it to like a mine but yeah. i have no idea what the entire expansive world is especially because like um the other people who you know showed up with them that same day and they're having a more successful thing with their parties they are still hanging out at the same tavern that they are so like they can't be traveling too far i think the idea is that from what i remember is like they're supposed to be joining the kind of the military to 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 defeat monsters on this border, like this territory from like yeah. the rest of the nation. But it, it wasn't very clear. No. Um, I don't think it was supposed to be super clear. Um, yeah. What, one of my, one of my, um, I remember the thing I wanted to say, but 
one of my favorite moments was um like the last fight with that giant cobalt um which i had to look it look it up I was like because in my head i was like cobalt are like little lizard people but i guess back in the day they they were supposed to be like wolf people like bef- then they turned into lizard people there are um, a lot of fantasy terms that mean fucking whatever they want to mean yeah ex- yeah exactly like last was it last week we did earwig or whatever uh-huh the the thing was called uh what was it called the, mandrake? the demon that he yeah it was a mandrake i'm like a mandrake is supposed to be like this little annoying plant that cries or whatever that's a mandrake or i thought oh no I, okay i know I, well that's <laughs> i know it's I just like, in the context of like each world i think that they did show a mandragora for a second in the earwig and the witch mm, uh and, yeah. like while they were making recipes but but what i want to say was like the, the fight where he's you know seeing the line and fighting that that giant yeah. fucking wolf thing and then he like <laughs> the part that really blew me away was when he he sla- like slashes at his like blade and it cuts in half and goes through him i was like holy shit i did not expect that to happen at all that that is so broken like whatever that attack was i was like but i really enjoyed it what I, what i forgot that i wanted to say was it's very violent like uh when they're killing their first goblin like he's talking like you can see that they thought they had him dead and then the i think the dark knight has to stab him like multiple times and he, like, it brings him to tears because it's an emotional thing to kill a living thing um but the show doesn't like try to hide that they from the very beginning they say hey it's kill or be killed and so they all very i think slowly have to realize how to kill something like a living thing um to the point where like he he gets really good at stabbing things because like hey i can tell if i hit the right vital point depending on the resistance i feel on my blade and stuff like that so yeah for sure not for like the people who are faint of heart when it comes to violence we were talking about it beforehand and we had said you had said it's like it's like baby demon no baby goblin slayer yeah and i was like yeah that's pretty good and then you even said it's like violent um a sentence of a bookworm because of the pace i was like yeah dude that's fucking spot on this is exactly that's exactly what it is i think yeah um, both of those are accurate um i i don't know after i was done with it, it it still it still feels that way but it also has the touch of like anohana in there where like yeah they're trying to heal as a friend group um right so yeah it's good i mean i i like i said i it was fine i had a a good time watching it i watched all of it i don't regret it um there's i think there's a few people i could recommend it to i wouldn't recommend to a lot of people but that's it man fucking grimgar ashes and illusions thank you jefferson i hope you enjoyed us reviewing your favorite anime (laughs) yeah i'm i'm really stoked to have seen something that hit a lot of good points Mm mm-hmm and still not have a good time. <laughs> like, it's fine. Watching, you don't have to have a good time. It was such an easy thing to watch. I was just into yeah. it the whole time. Uh, but then I was also like, this fucking trash ass, bullshit ass, fan service <laughs> ass, stupid show. And then I'm like, I can't wait for the next episode. I'm really excited to see <laughs> what's going to happen. Um, but I think it, that's just you and I. We've come to the conclusion that we would... We would so much rather watch anything as long as it's not painful to watch, like torture. Like if it's a it's like a bad show and not for us or whatever, that's fine as long as it we don't feel like pain watching it. Like and there's times where you watch a show and we go, This is so bad and we have to finish it and I fucking hate every second Cagister, of it. That was this, Magmel. Oh. Uh <laughs> what else fucking is there, dude? Oh. Uh Ico. <laughs> uh cannon Sword busters guy. was on the line like cannon that is busters. the most line ass shit i've ever seen the the best part about cannon busters is the intro it was so fucking the, the song was so fucking jazzy it lied to me it fucking tricked me into believing that this episode was gonna be a good one people love was cannon garbage. busters i know people love cannon busters and i think those people are fucking stupid because what they what they don't they don't love cannon busters they love all the fucking other shows that Cannon Busters put in a blender and then blend it together and fucking shove down your gullet. This How do you feel ass. about people that love Neo Yokio? I don't fucking know. Because <laughs> uh, I cause I kind of was like okay with I Neo I mean, Yokio. you got I, it. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. I absolutely get it. I don't think I'd ever like physically sit down and watch it. I wanted to, to like it. But I, I did was like, too. No. I was really ready to have a weird fun time with it. There's there you know what it, there was just some moments that felt very reminiscent to me of like um, Scott Pilgrim saves like versus the world or Scott Pilgrim versus the universe or whatever or you know the movie like the way they said things the dialogue they said like they they brought like a they gave importance to things that like weren't really important you know the way they would talk and stuff like oh I, I appreciate that but as a whole 
I was like, you know what? Nah. There was that episode that they didn't one of them turn into a girl or something like that. Like yeah, one dude, of the t- friends. They were trying to do like a Ranma uh, one half thing. Yeah, yeah. No, man. It just I, all those shows we just said. Grimgar, Ashes and Illusions. I would rather watch that than those. Again. Oh yeah, me too. Yeah, without a doubt. So yeah, thanks for the thanks for the recommendation, Jefferson. We appreciate it. If you um, ever and, do want to recommend us more anime, this is to everybody out there. Yeah. Uh, please do. We are working on getting together a list of like all the fucking shows that we've seen. Um, yeah. I went through the last ten years on my anime list and updated all of that. Uh, so. Yeah, absolutely recommend shows to us. We plan on watching and reviewing Garzy's Wing here with our friend who uh, is always watching our our streams um, and having a great time with that. So it would when be. Are, yeah. we doing that? are we doing that next week? Is that next no, week? No, next week is Crunchyroll. No, Crunchyroll. What the fuck's wrong Crunchyroll, with you? Right. Next week we're reviewing we the have Crunchyroll an agenda. Awards. They're going to be letting us know who won. I'm never really a big fan of watching the streams that they do because. Sometimes I get really cringy people, but we're going to do it. We're going to do it for you guys. It's fine. I mean, we're pretty fucking cringy ourselves, my man. Yeah, dude. We're best so mom. Fucking we've got a best mom. I've got a best mom. I mean, we already did our episode with that. They didn't. Crunch them all fucked up. You know? Who was best mom? Who'd you vote for best mom again? Do you really want to go over it before the next episode where we're going to talk about it all again? <laughs> But we just did that. I just forgot. Okay, you'll tell me after the pod. Anyways, yeah, sure, sure, I think sure. we're done. Okay, so if you like our theme song, check out Tom, uh, check out. Hold on, not Mars on Spotify and yeah. YouTube. He's got his new single out, Paperweight. Uh, check him out. He's a great guy. Trip, where can people find us? You can find us on Facebook. Look up the Instagram podcast. Uh, same thing goes for Instagram. Look up the Instagram podcast. If you want to send us a tweet, tweet at Instant Ramen Pod. Podcast interfit. And you can shoot us an email, Instagram Podcast at Gmail each week, we stream our recording sessions on Twitch. Uh, it's twitch.tv forward slash Chrispather. You can come and hang out a little bit before, a little bit after. It's a chill time. If you want, just come at the very end and just fucking spam the shit out of our chat like last week. What a great time. It was so much fun. Uh, this is bye from Juan. I'll see you around from Chris. Hey, Trip, don't forget. Just add hot water. <laughs>